Okay, troops, this is another application of centripetal force banking. This is when you bank a track that a vehicle is travelling on to allow it to move faster around the track. So, what we've got here is a car travelling on a circular track. It's got a radius of 8 metres. And if that track is flat, it's friction that provides the centripetal force to keep it moving in a circle. But, eventually, if that car was to go faster and faster, eventually you're going to get to a stage where friction can no longer keep it moving in a circular path. The car would obviously then skid off at a tangent. And the way around this then is to use a track that is banked. And that's what they do in velodromes, that's cycling tracks, or IndyCar, or Mario Kart, or various other applications. So, on a flat track, the weight of the vehicle, that's the force of the car on the road, is balanced by the force of the road on the car, that's the reaction force. If we have a banked track, though, then the car still exerts a force on the road, and the road exerts an equal and opposite force on the car. That's called the reaction force. So, here's the force of the car on the road. So it's acting perpendicular to the road. And here is the reaction force. An equal and opposite force. The reaction force. That's just Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, your banked track is at an angle theta. And it's this reaction force that we're interested in. And it can be split into two components. So, let's draw again. There's a car. There's the force of the car into the slope. And there's the reaction force. Let's split that reaction force up into two components, a vertical component and a horizontal component. There's the reaction force. Now vertically, that reaction force has to support the weight of the car. So the vertical component is equal to mg, and the horizontal component is the force that the road is pushing the car into the centre of the circle with. That's the centripetal force, mv squared over r. And the angle of the bank is that angle theta in this triangle. Now, we can do a little bit of trigonometry, because tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent. That's mv squared over r over mg. Let's simplify that. Again, I like separating these two out. So it's mv squared over r times 1 over mg, that allows us to cancel out the m's and then gather the terms. So tan theta is v squared on the top line and gr on the bottom line. Let's rearrange that further, so v squared is gr tan theta. And square root in everything, v is equal to the square root of gr tan theta. Theta. Hmm, we met this with the conical pendulum as well. Now, G is a constant and R is a constant. The radius of the circle and the gravitational field strength. Therefore, the only thing that affects your speed around the track is the angle of the banking. Theta. So if theta is your bank angle, then V is your tangential speed around the track. The bigger the angle is, the bigger your bank angle, then the faster you can go around the track. And again, mass doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a big heavy car or a wee light car. It's independent of the mass. And this applies when there is no friction. And by the way, if your bank angle was 90 degrees, then you could go infinitely fast. Hmm, you could discuss that.
That might be a nice open-ended question. Okay, there's loads of examples of banking. It's how planes turn on the sky. As a vertical component supporting the weight and a horizontal component providing the centripetal force. So the same components apply for cyclists leaning into a turn or for ice skaters turning in a circular path. Okay, we haven't done an example, so let's go way back to the start where we told you that this car was travelling on a track of a radius 8 metres. Let's consider that this 8 metre radius track is a banked track. And we could calculate the maximum tangential speed of the car if the track was banked at say 10 degrees, 20, 45 and 85 degrees. I'll show you how to do the first one. So we're going to use the relationship that we've just derived. V equals the square root of gr tan theta. And our first example is when theta is 10 degrees. So let's just sub in our values, 9.8 and the radius was 8 meters. And our theta is 10 degrees. Now be careful here. Because if your angle is in degrees, make sure your calculator is in degrees. Not radians. So watch out for that. If you're doing trigonometry in degrees, make sure your calculator is set to degrees. That gives us an answer of 3.71. That's the maximum tangential speed. For part B and C and D, I can leave you to try these on your own, but here's the answers for them anyway. 5.34. Notice it's not a linear relationship, so if you double the angle, you don't double the tangential speed. Uh, 45 degrees is 8.85, and then when we go way up to 85 degrees, as your angle tends towards 90, your velocity will tend towards infinity. But at 85 degrees, the velocity comes out at 30 meters per second. So steeper bank angles will give us greater maximum tangential speeds. Now we should double check our working and the more observant amongst you will notice that this one had been rounded wrongly. An incorrect rounding is wrong, so I've changed it to 3.72. But really, we should be rounding to two significant figures because your answer should be expressed to the same level of precision as the numbers in the question. So two sig figs for all of them. I think that's us. Let's go and do some practice.